Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, I want to take you behind the scenes on how I actually make all the videos that I do here on YouTube. Because a bunch of y'all have asked, so let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So um, it is January 1, 2021. Yes. <laughs> 2020 is finally over. Um, and I guess just getting back into the habit of doing daily videos, not just vlogs, but everything from a media ministry standpoint, um, I kind of want to give you a tour of the whole operation that goes on behind this. Because contrary to everybody else, for my YouTube setup is not really, was not really meant for YouTube. My setup is because I focus on media ministries is to have a scaled down version of what typically would go in a media ministry at a at a ministry um, but small scale so that when people ask me questions or demos i have the small version because there's no point in me having a a humongous x32 48 channel mixer with instruments drum mics and all that I, I don't need all that but i can have a small scale version of it so that when people ask me questions or i design systems i have the concept because what i'm using for youtube and making videos is exactly what i am recommending to other people so let me walk through with you let me clip my mic on my pocket here so it doesn't go all over the place let's uncradle this mic I mean this camera and let's take a tour shall we yep I got the thing velcroed in here all right so pretty much how I have my setup is I have a dual system setup just like I would recommend to other churches as priority so right now uh, my chair is in the way. <laughs> this is my streaming machine, which is a Ryzen 5 3600 with 16 gigabytes of memory and a GTX 1650. That is what handles all of the live streaming. And as you can see right now, I'm recording and this is how I'm recording right now. And I'll explain why I'm not using the ATEM for that right now, the ATEM Mini Pro, which is what I normally do. So I am running vMix, but originally this runs was running OBS. I also run soon to be running Wirecast on this. So this runs all of my streaming software because it is more than capable of running this. Now, again, like I said, yes, do I use the A10 Mini? Yes, it's right there <laughs> using this for right now in this setup. But the reason I use this is because I was doing this before the A10 Mini became available. This is the reason why I had this designed is because, you know, originally I always talked about having a dedicated system to handle your live stream, which is exactly my exact same setup. So in a pinch, do I use the A10 Mini Pro? Yes, I do. But depending on what you're trying to do at your ministry, I still would recommend going with a dedicated system. Now. Like I said, we have our Atom Mini Pro right now that is running the Sony um, ZV-1 that I have in my hand right now. My original Sony 4K camcorder, um, that is an AX53. And then I have my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is what I normally will use looking here. So all of these cameras, and then I also have input number two right here is for my second screen, which is doing an echo right now um, with studio monitor, NDI studio monitor. I have all this going through here right now. This is how I switch, do everything. So if I'm doing, oh, and I also have my overhead camera, which is gonna be replaced with the ZV-1 that I have right now. I'm just waiting for the brackets and everything to come in. But that is, 
what I normally do when I'm recording. I will have my heads up camera, the pocket cinema camera. I will cut over to the overhead or I'll cut over to the camcorder if I wanted some different type of dynamics. But I really don't use that one that much. I have the cameras fo focusing this way because then you got all my kitchen and stuff over here. And that's not really desirable to look at. So that's why I have everything set up this way. But then I will use this input number two to switch over to my computer at any point in time. Now, what's the importance of that? This simulates if I'm running like Worship Extreme, Pro Presenter, Easy Worship, whatever software, because this is capturing monitor number two. Let me minimize this. Um, it's capturing monitor number two. So when, if I'm doing some type of Worship Extreme or presentation stuff, this is the screen that everybody's looking at but it will present on this side. So actually, let me open that up actually so we can see exactly what it looks like. And I'm gonna bring up something here so y'all can see the whole setup. All right, so this would be the main output that people are using to run Worship Extreme or present Pro Presenter, whatever software you want. And it is outputting to monitor number two. This is also what is being captured with my input. So if I switch over to this right now, now you're seeing that that's what's going on. So just like when I show my desktop, it's the exact same thing, but I'm just capturing in a church setting, a ministry setting, it's broadcasting the second screen that's being captured by the ATEM to your live stream or your congregation or whatever you decide to do it that way. All right. Now, also in the setup, the way I have it, I am using right now the USB out to go into my streaming system, but this system really does have a capture card. So I could use the HDMI out, but I'm not because that is what my um, multi view is going to. So this is how I have this. So this would be simulating if I was running this and for another monitor or something like that. So I could hook it up to this, but I'm not using that. I used a Ori multi, um, multi viewer. I plan on hooking that up. I just don't have enough cables for it, but that's what's giving me my multi view. So again, this is all from a media ministry standpoint. So I would have my multi view. We would have our worship extreme or presentation software being cast to a second monitor, which would also be like on site projectors, TVs or something like that inside the sanctuary. That's the same setup here. Just think again, everything I do here is coming from a standpoint of if this was a miniaturized um, church. So <laughs> I have the, everything that I do here is exactly what I'm working with, which I know will work when we install it at a ministry. All right, so we got all that. Now, as you can see, I have the Evo 4 right there that is hooked up directly to this mic. And, but I mean, I do that because this is like a small mixer, so I'm getting direct sound. Right now, I am using my Rode wireless so that I can move around. Um, but we have our sound coming in from here from my little, Yamaha mixer over here, which is not being used right now because I'm using the wireless go when I have big setups, multiple mics and stuff like that. That's what this is. This is routed through some XLR outs through the monitor out. And then that connects into the ATEM right there for sound, which is off right now because I'm not using it. That will simulate capturing sound from an entire um, sound mixer that you would have at your church. So all your drums, your instruments, your singers, the preacher, environmental mics, whatever is being captured so that everything that's going out in the house is coming into the ATEM and it's being sent over to our, as you can see, the mics to feed because that's what the sound is coming back. So we're getting all the sound that's going to our live stream. Now, the ATEM does allow you to edit the sound a little bit, but again, the idea is we're capturing everything. The presentation stuff is separate. 
our streaming system is separate, our sound is separate, our video cameras and everything is separate. I always think about having everything separate because yes, could all this be done on one system? I mean, this, this is my editing system, which is a Ryzen 9, more than fast enough to do all of this. But if this one system went down, guess what? You've lost everything. Um, that's why I like to have it split in this way so that if anything happens, like even at my church, we have a presentation system, we have a system that handles the cameras, then we also have our live streaming system. If anything happens to any of them, those systems are more than powerful enough to take on multiple tasks if needed. Um, and I always believe in redundancy. All right, so now with all of that going on, so we're, we would live stream through our streaming system over here, my daughter's headphones. Um, with stream through here and this goes here, I can record here and that would give me the backup here wherever I'm going to, which right now for church, we're going to Vimeo. Vimeo will make a backup and then Vimeo is rebroadcasting to um, Facebook, our website or anything like that. That's how this is work. But just for me, I'm recording without streaming and then I edit and then that's what you're seeing here on YouTube. So um, really simple overview. Um, uh, I mean, I don't want to say it's, <laughs> it's a simple overview, meaning that I didn't go really in depth with it. But this kind of talks about exactly what I do when I install it at a ministry because I'm using the exact same setup here. Um, and again, I'm not going into it right now, but what I'm going to do is take the recording off of this. I bring that over into this computer, which is my video editing system. And then I go into DaVinci Resolve, do my edits and upload. That's how I do this. And then when I'm done, I don't know if you can see it over there, but there's two Synologies. One is black, the other one is white. The white one is for personal stuff. That one is a media drive. So I drop the assets of all the video that I recorded, the audio, everything goes into there as well as the final copy goes there and I keep it for a year before I purge it. So because this is January 1, I need to go and purge last year's stuff. And I just keep the final recording, all the extra stuff I don't keep to free up space. So for those who ask, that is how I do my videos here. Um, I've done more than enough videos to show how I actually edit, but that's not going to be a part of this video. I just wanted to show you the gear that I use to do all this. Oh, and I also have some Elgato lights and all this other stuff to make everything nice. I didn't even talk about the teleprompter, but I already have a video talking about that. Normally, and actually let me show you here. Normally, right here, this is, I would do a full screen from my streaming system. And now this is showing a reflection of here. So when I'm looking at this camera, I'm only focused up here. So I'm always looking into the camera, but I have that off because I'm not using that camera right now. We're using the ZV-1. Um, but yeah, really cool. Um, now I don't want anybody to think like, oh my gosh, I need all this. No, you don't need all this. Again, I started with just a webcam. It's over here somewhere, but I, yeah, there it goes. And it's plugged in so I can't use it. I started with a webcam, which has a mic and everything built in. So don't use that equipment as an excuse to not get started. This took me a while to get to. Um, I've been doing all of this stuff for at least five years, but being serious with the YouTube thing in the last two. So it took me a while to get to this. And this was just a me type of thing to where working, busting my butt, saving, got to the point um, of getting the equipment to buy and do all this other stuff. But again, it is within reach when you make a serious decision to go in that direction because if you're focused, you will have the income will come. Um, and I'm a testament to that. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I will have, um, I will update my kit 
link down below that have a link to everything that I'm using. Um, as detailed as possible, the specs of the computers and all this other stuff I probably won't have there, but I will try and put that if you ask, um, if that's what y'all really want to know. But anyway, that's about it. If you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons for making this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button below. And no matter which one you pick, folks, you are helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching folks, this is AJ and we will see you on the next video later. All right, so let's come over here, stop recording and the editing starts.